and we are reading about this secret nature who has been revealed to Aswapati. This is not the earth nature, it's not the divine nature, it's something in between. And uh, we've been reading about uh, her main instrument that she uses to build up her worlds and do her magic. It is the wand of mind. So I'm going to read on from there. A mediatrix with veiled and nameless gods whose alien will touches our human life. Imitating the world magician's ways, she invents for her self-bound free will its grooves and feigns for magic's freaks a binding cause. All worlds she makes, the partners of her deeds, accomplices of her mighty violence, her daring leaps into the impossible. From every source she has taken her cunning means. She draws from the free love marriage of the plains, elements for her creations toward the force. A wonder weft of knowledge incalculable, a compendium of divine inventions feats. She has combined to make the unreal true or liberate suppressed reality. In her unhedged Circean wonderland, pell-mell she shepherds her occult mightinesses, her mnemonics of the craft of the infinite, Jets of the screened subliminal's caprice, tags of the grammary of inconscience, freedom of a sovereign truth without a law, thoughts that were born in the immortal's world, oracles that break out from behind the shrine, warnings from the demonic inner voice, and peeps and lightning leaps of prophecy and intimations to the inner ear. Abrupt interventions, stark and absolute, and the superconscious unaccountable acts have woven her balanced web of miracles and the weird technique of her tremendous art. This bizarre kingdom passed into his charge as one resisting more, the more she loves. Her great possessions and her power and law she gave, compelled with a reluctant joy. Herself she gave for rapture and for use absolved from aberrations in deep ways, the ends she recovered 
for which she was made. She turned against the evil she had helped, her engine wrath, her invisible means to slay. Her dangerous moods and arbitrary force, she surrendered to the service of the soul and the control of a spiritual will. A greater despot tamed her despotism, assailed, surprised in the fortress of herself, conquered by her own unexpected king, fulfilled and ransomed by her servitude, she yielded in a vanquished ecstasy, her sealed hermetic wisdom forced from her, fragments of the mystery of omnipotence. So this is not an easy passage. It's a very mysterious passage about a very mysterious being and force. Mm -hmm. You'll start, um, Suresh. Yeah. A very effect with pale and nameless force, whose alarm will purchase our human life. Imitating the world magician's way, she invented for herself for free will its rules and with feints for magic brings a binding case. Cause, cause a binding cause. Yeah. So a mediatrix. It's a feminine form, this I-X ending. We have creator and we have creatrix. So a mediator, we all know what a mediator is, no? If you're having problems with somebody settling a dispute, you will ask somebody to uh, communicate between you. So that's what she does. She, uh, she's a kind of go-between. She goes between these veiled and nameless gods whose um, will and whose influence has some effect on our human life. She's mediating between those gods and our world. And last time or the time before we read about uh, the world magician, that this whole uh, creation has been made by a, um, where has it come? Uh, page 84, I think. Mm -hmm. An almighty occultist. No? It's page 84, line 355. The, it's a magician, an occultist, erects this seeming outward world, which tricks, which deceives our senses, misleads us. Hmm? So, uh, Shobindo described for us how that uh, world magician works, and then he described to us how this secret nature works. And here he's saying that she imitates the ways of the world magician. She creates her own grooves. Nowadays we don't have gramophone records. Those of us who are old enough can remember the grooves before the CDs came. 
So when the needle is in the groove, it has to stay in the groove. It always has to follow that. No? So she, when she's a creative force, she creates for her own self-bound free will. She can do anything, but for her game, she creates certain conditions, some rules. And she feigns, this means to pretend. She pretends that for this impossible magic which she does, that there's a reason for it, a cause, a law behind it. But she's just made up that law herself. I said last time, no, that I think this passage is talking about the world of occultism, which seems to us like magic, but which has its rules and laws, which occultists learn and know how to follow to achieve their results, which look so miraculous to us and impossible. Some people are born occultists, they're born with that gift, yes. And of course mother had that gift, but uh, then she cultivated it and learned to use it yeah. from uh, Monsieur and Madame Théon. Yeah. Mm. I think especially from Madame Théon, she learned a great deal. Mm. Uh, I have a question on this line, imitating the world magician's way. His ways of doing things. But who is the world magician? Is it like this Ishvara Shakti? Uh, yes, it's the creator. Okay. Yeah. So he makes here a separation between the ultimate creator and the divine force? No, he, yes, it, it is quite difficult to understand. We usually think of the creator as masculine and uh, the world force as feminine. That's the traditional Indian way of looking at it. But we can also think that the Lord himself is the world magician. He's the one who's done all the magic and at least thought it up. Then it gets implemented through his force. And uh, in that previous passage which we read last week, uh, Shrobindor speaks of the creator of the physical world, the material world that we see as a world magician, as an almighty occultist. Somebody who does magic, actually, a powerful um, enchanter has set up all this. And then when he compares that with this secret nature who is operating on a lower field, she's not creating the whole universe. She's creating some kind of subtle world in, we can think of her as the mother of dreams. Yes. Shobindo has uh, written a poem. Uh, he composed it while he was in prison in Aleppo. It's the mother of dreams. He paints this mysterious figure and all the things that she's doing. And uh, mother also refers to her in prayers and meditations, and somewhere else. So he says that this, this force which deals with the occult worlds imitates the ways of the the one who has created the physical world. She's doing things in a similar sort of way. 
and um, she she imitates or she pretends to have laws in the way that the material universe have, has laws. She she pretends that all this arbitrary magic that she does, these uh, freaks, that there is a binding cause, a, a, a law which may, means that it has to happen like that. Mm. It's very interesting suddenly from in my mind when Mother tell to Shirobindo, you remember in the over mind, we have a lot of God near her. Mother want to create some true occultism. We see the world with uh, and Shobindo we tell her you do the you are. He says it will be a great success, yeah, exactly. but it will be a creation of the overmind, and it won't be what we want. <laughs> again, I think it's a, it's a sim something similar, but again, I think it's on another level. I think this occultism is more on the vital level, vital and subtle physical level. Uh, in fact, he's going to tell us in the next uh, uh, passage uh, where all her power is coming from. Um, Bebel, would you read? Yes. In all words, she makes the partners of her deeds, the complexes of her mighty violence, her daring lips, it will be impossible. From every source, she has taken her kind means. She draws from the free love to marriage of the plans, elements for her creations to the form. Yes. So she actually takes help from all the worlds, not only the physical world, but all the subtle worlds. She, she draws them into her game and makes them her partners, accomplices of her mighty violence, which it suggests that what she's doing in a way violates the natural laws of the true laws. Mm. Her daring leaps into the impossible. So from every source, from all the worlds, from all the different levels, she takes her cunning means, a little bit from here and a little bit from there, what suits her purpose, and she uses all those things. Cunning. cunning. Somebody who's cunning, they are tricky, they, they cleverly do things. She draws from the free love marriage of the planes. There are so many planes of existence. And uh, a free love marriage, it's a marriage which is unauthorized in a way. It's just between the partners, they get together. So she, she brings together um, planes which normally wouldn't connect, but she connects them and... Mm. Can free love also mean something like open relationship, like many partners being together? It could mean that, perhaps, yes. Mm. Mm. It's anyway not formalized, it's not a, a formal union. No? Elements for her creations, tour de force. So you explain to me the exact nuance of this phrase in uh, French, Joel, please. Tour de force. Tour de force. Um, it's, it's when you have achieved something uh, in quite an extraordinary way. In an extraordinary way, yeah. Something was, outstanding. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't have been able to do it, but somehow you, mm, you did. Up, yes. It. Yeah, oh, exactly. So it's exactly that, no? Something, a, a magic freak, and something impossible. Wow, she did it. Yeah. <laughs> 
we, we paused there. Did we stop there? Yes. Um, Evelyn. I wonder what technology is capable of a compendium of divine inventions is. She has combined to make the unreal truth or liberate the suppressed reality. Yes. A wonder weft. Weft has to do with weaving. A piece of cloth is a weft. Threads are woven together in different directions. And uh, we can maybe weave together things that wouldn't normally go together. We can put silk and wool together. We can put different elements, weave them together. So she does something like that of incalculable knowledge. Un incalculable, it means unpredictable. You don't know what, uh, uh, what is going to come out next. Hmm? Well, the, that's what she creates. Do you mean uh, not measurable or cannot be measurable? Incalculable. No, you can't calculate in advance what's going to come out. No? If something is calculable, it's predictable. But this is incalculable, can't be. Mm. And then a compendium. A compendium uh, is a kind of book where you put many different things together. Can be very entertaining kind of books uh, for educational purposes, where you put many different uh, kinds of knowledge together and stories and uh, um, Poems, all kinds of things, a compendium. It's not compilation. It's somehow similar to a, a compilation, but there's the idea that it's complete, or maybe not complete, but very full, full and varied. Hmm? So she's put together this, uh, this compendium, this collection of divine inventions, feats. Um, feats are achievements, great achievements that have happened through divine intervention or invention. She's combined all these things to make the unreal true. Or perhaps what she's really doing is liberating, setting free realities which are suppressed and hidden. Uh, Alice. In her unhedged Circean wonderland, <laughs> tell Mel she shepherds her apart mightinesses. Current mnemonics of the craft of the infinite, jets of the screens of luminous caprice, tags of the grounding of inconscience, freedom of sovereign truth without the law, thoughts that were born in the immortal's world, oracles that break out from behind the shrine, warnings demonic inner voice that keeps and lightning leaps of prophecy and invitations to the inner ear. Abrupt, abrupt interventions stark and absolute and the superconscious unaccountable acts have woven her balanced web of miracles and the weird technique of her tremendous art. So how many page, how many lines has this sentence got? <laughs> Starts at line 432, no? 432. Hmm? So there are longer sentences in Savitri, but it's quite a long one. And it's a kind of list, isn't it? It's a list of all the things that she's drawing on. Drawing from every source, 
all these things. And uh, she's ruling over a wonderland, a land full of wonders, a land where wonderful, amazing things can happen. It's unlimited. There's no hedge or boundary around it. And he uses this uh, uh, adjective, Circean. He refers to this uh, enchantress, Circe, several times in the poem. She, she appears in the ancient Greek epic of the Odyssey, the voyages of Odysseus or Ulysses, when he's returning, trying to return home after the Trojan War. And he, one of the places which he comes to, it's a magical island. Uh, Sri refers to it several, several times. So she, she has something like that. It's not hedged, it's not limited, but it's magical. Um, the, the thing that Circe does is that she feeds you her magic and turns you into an animal. Hmm. So there's a slight uh, reference to that in the next line where he refers to her as a shepherdess. She's looking after all her animals, her, her sheep and her goats and her pigs. You know, Pell-mell, one after another. It's a big crowd, a confused crowd. All these secret powers. She, they are not in any classified or in any particular order. They're just crowding. So now he's going to give a list of these occult mightinesses. First of all, mnemonics. Anybody knows what a mnemonic is? Hmm? It's a trick to remember things. Yes. Anybody can give us a mnemonic? Like the GR for uh, Oh, for the colors of the rainbow. Vibgyo, no? Violet, indigo, green, yellow, uh, orange, red. Vibgyo. That's, that's the colors of the rainbow, right. And there's one for the months of the year, and uh, there are many different kinds of mnemonics. Even um, equations can be mnemonics, no? E equals m v squared. We can once <laughs> we won't forget if we remember that. So mnemonics. She has a lot of ways of remembering uh, that help her to do, use the craft, the skill, the skill in making things of the infinite. Jets of the screened subliminals, caprice. The subliminal, it's that vast expanse of consciousness which is beyond the threshold of our awareness. It is screened from us. And he suggests that she she gets little jets, little spurts of power from there uh, without any order. Caprice, again, it's, it's in a disorderly, unpredictable way. Tags of the grammary of inconscience. You notice these are coming from different sources. The mnemonics come from the craft of the infinite, the jets come from the, the uh, subliminal. And now this is from the inconscient itself. Grammary, it's an old word for magic. There was a time when uh, reading and writing and being able to put words together cleverly, it was something magical. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, well, grammar, it is magic. Being able to speak spells or make up spells even. 
Yes, here he's saying that, 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 that there's, a, there's a magic also of the inconscience, and there are these tags, these little phrases that help you remember how to use the powers of the inconscience. She's doing all these magic tricks. And then she also enjoys this freedom of a sovereign truth without a law, the very highest truth. She can draw on that also. She can draw on thoughts that were born in the immortal's world, in the world of the gods. Oracles. Oracles are divine messages, no? But these more, uh, oracles are coming in a strange way. They're, they're just breaking out from behind the shrine. There's the, the shrine and the god or the priestess who's supposed to give the oracle. But they're, they're breaking out unexpectedly. No? Warnings from the demonic inner voice. This is the guiding voice the ancient Greek uh, philosopher um, Socrates. Uh, he, he tells us that he had this spirit within him who advised him which way to go, to turn right or to left, to do this or that. You know? So it's the inner spirit which can give guidance you know? or warnings in this case and peeps, just little glimpses and lightning leaps of prophecy and intimations. Intimations are hints, hints to the inner ear. Abrupt interventions, stark and absolute, when there's some kind of divine interference, can't be resisted absolute and the superconscious unaccountable acts they come from the highest level of consciousness and they are also uh, can't be explained unaccountable all these things this whole list of things from coming from different sources all together they have woven her balanced web of miracles. We use this word web particularly for the spider's web, but it can also mean any kind of weaving. Mm. So she has a, a balanced, woven uh, texture, fabric of miracles. All these different factors contribute to her weird technique, her strange, uh, even frightening technique of her tremendous art. It's very unconditional. It's good. Mm, yes. So who's next, Kanapan? This bizarre kingdom passed into his charge. As one resisting more, the more she loves. Had great positions and the power and law she gave. Compel with a reluctant joy. Herself she gave for rapture and for use. Yes. So this bizarre kingdom, bizarre, the word itself means strange and inexplicable and weird. No? It passes uh, into the control of King Aswapati because this secret nature yield surrenders to him unwillingly <laughs> or half unwillingly it's like a kind of love story no like someone who resists more the more attracted she is the more she loves 
So she resists, but still she, she gives all her great possessions, all her power and law, her law, her learning, all the things that she has learned, she gave. Compelled, she has to give it. She gives it with a reluctant joy, resisting. And she yields herself, her whole self, for rapture, for him to enjoy, and for him to use. Devon. Absorbed from aberrations in deep ways, the ends she recovered for which she was made. She turned against the evil she had helped, her engine rock, her invisible means to slay, her dangerous moves and arbitrary force. She surrendered to the service of the soul and control of the spiritual will. Yes. So she's absolved. She's set free by surrendering to uh, King Aswapati. She's liberated from aberrations in deep ways. She's been wandering. She's been lost in all kinds of dark and dangerous paths. And now she's set free from that state. She f finds back, she recovers the ends, the true purposes for which this secret nature was made, her, her own true purpose and meaning. And then she turns against all the evil that she's been helping with her magic. No? She, she turns against it, all her powers, her anger, her engined wrath with a great power of destruction, her invisible means to slay, to kill. She uses those against all the evil which she had been helping. All her dangerous moods, her arbitrary force, you know, that she can just do anything she surrendered in the service to the service of the soul. That's what King Aswapati represents. He can take over all this occult power, control it with his spiritual will. Joanna. A greater despot tamed her despotism, assailed, surprised in the fortress of herself, conquered by her own unexpected king, fulfilled and ransomed by her servitude. She yielded in a vanquished ecstasy, her sealed hermetic wisdom forced from her fragments of the mystery of all importance. Yes. A despot is an absolute ruler. So in her own world, that's what she is. But now Asvapati has come. She's had to surrender to his spiritual will. He's a greater despot. He can tame her despotism. Mm -hmm. uh, despot is it not... Uh <clears throat> Actually, the despot, it was the, the, last, uh, the name of the last rulers of the Byzantine Empire. When the empire had been destroyed and there was no more emperor, they had a, a, a ruler who had, uh, he was given absolute authority, the despot. The, the destroyer. Hmm? 
A despot is not a destroyer, but he's a, a ruler with arbitrary powers. He can do what he wants, no? Despot. Uh, it's a political term. Hmm? Uh, you, we can say an emperor, an absolute ruler, like that. Yeah. But the despot, technically, it was this series of last few rulers after the um, Byzantine empire, empire had collapsed, the Greeks had been driven out of uh, what is now Turkey, and they retreated into the um, Peloponnese and uh, near Sparta. The, 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 the ancient city is still there, Mistra. And when Mistra was destroyed, then they all left for Italy. And that uh, was the beginning of the Renaissance, or the recovery of all the ancient knowledge. Mm -hmm. So the, there, you, in Mistra, you can see to this day the despot's palace. And it's really not very grand. <laughs> it wasn't very big. They were not very powerful by that time. Yeah. But it has this, it was, Obviously, in a desperate situation like that, you want a dictator. No? You want a strong leader who just takes the decisions. And then you let him do whatever he, he says, because uh, you don't know what to do yourself. So this secret nature finds herself assailed, attacked, surprised in the fortress of herself, conquered by her own unexpected king. It reminds me of the story of uh, Chitrangada. It's in the Mahabharata, it's an episode in the Mahabharata, when the, there's a whole year where Arjuna isn't allowed to be with um, the Pandavas, he has to Go, and he uses that time to conquer outlying kingdoms and gain their alliance and their power. And one of the places he goes to is Manipur, right up in the northeast. And there, there's a kingdom ruled by a queen, a queendom, Chitrangada. And uh, he he conquers her, and uh, she, she falls in love with him and uh, surrenders everything that she has, no, all her powers to him. So it's a story like that. Conquered by her own unexpected king. And that conquest and that surrender fulfills her. She fulfills, she's fulfilled and ransomed, set free by her servitude, by serving him she finds her own true purpose. She yielded, she gives herself up in a vanquished ecstasy. She's conquered, but she's ecstatic about it, blissful about it. And this secret nature, she finds that her all her secrets sealed up hermetic wisdom is forced from her. Hermetic, engineers use this term, I think, a hermetic seal. It's one that can't be dissolved or broken. And it, the, the word it can also mean absolutely waterproof, or something that's hermetically sealed. But it's actually the, the term hermetic, it comes from the name Hermes, who was a great occultist uh, long, long ago in Europe, or perhaps in Egypt, maybe in Egypt. So her wisdom is fragmentary. These are fragments, little bits of wisdom, but they are fragments of the mystery of omnipotence, all power.
So there's another short section about this, um, this mysterious power, this mother of dreams, but we'll read it next time. Hmm. Yes, um, it, it, we, we see her surrendering, but she's compelled. She wouldn't surrender otherwise. So this, this knowledge also, she gives it up reluctantly. It is forced from her by this conquest of the spiritual will. The spiritual will is all able to overcome the resistance of all these lower forces or all these many forces from different sources. Mm. But previously we said uh, she herself fully in love and power everything mm. and here we said that it's all that is taken from her was compelled to be. Yeah, she gave compelled, no? it says at the top. Yeah, she gave and the, and uh, that, uh, that applies, it goes on applying to the end here. So shall we read this passage? A mediatrix with veiled and nameless gods whose alien will touches our human life. Imitating the world magician's ways, she invents for her self-bound free will its grooves and feigns for magic's freaks a binding cause. All worlds she makes the partners of her deeds, accomplices of her mighty violence, her daring leaps into the impossible. From every source she has taken her cunning means. She draws from the free love marriage of the plains elements for her creation's tour de force. A wonder weft of knowledge incalculable, a compendium of divine invention's feats she has combined to make the unreal true or liberate suppressed reality. In her unhedged Circean wonderland, pell-mell she shepherds her occult mightinesses. Her mnemonics of the craft of the infinite Jets of the screened subliminal's caprice, tags of the grammary of inconscience, freedom of a sovereign truth without a law, thoughts that were born in the immortal's world, oracles that break out from behind the shrine. Warnings from the demonic inner voice and peeps and lightning leaps of prophecy and intimations to the inner ear. Abrupt interventions, stark and absolute, and the superconscious, unaccountable acts have woven her balanced web of miracles and the weird technique of her tremendous art. 
This bizarre kingdom passed into his charge. As one resisting more, the more she loves, her great possessions and her power and law she gave, compelled with a reluctant joy. Herself she gave for rapture and for use. Absolved from aberrations in deep ways, the ends she recovered for which she was made. She turned against the evil she had helped, her engined wrath her invisible means to slay. Her dangerous moods and arbitrary force, she surrendered to the service of the soul and the control of a spiritual will. A greater despot tamed her despotism. Assailed, surprised in the fortress of herself, conquered by her own unexpected king, fulfilled and ransomed by her servitude, she yielded in a vanquished ecstasy. Her sealed hermetic wisdom forced from her fragments of the mystery of omnipotence.